year we did a presentation um, on accounting for investments, um, but I went back and looked at it. We didn't spend a whole lot of time on the interest, so we've had some questions come up through um, to the channels from treasurers, and we've had some feedback from our field staff that maybe we need to do a little bit of training on just the interest itself. So that's what we're focusing on this um, in this presentation. Um, we heard earlier today from the Treasurer State's Office, um, and they, you know, they stress the security, liquidity, and yield. And this is the yield portion of the guidance. Um, the interest earned on your deposits and investments is additional income to your county, and it's very important. Um, obviously, you're not getting very much right now, but hopefully the economy will change. Um, it is not more important than security, which means you don't want to lose anything you've invested, and it's not more important liquidity. That the funds need to be available um, when you need them. You don't want them tied up in an in a investment uh, when they need to be spent. So obviously you will accept a lesser interest rate to provide those, the security and liquidity. In the Indiana Code, 5-13 is on investments, 5-13-9 is specifically on investments, and, and uh, the section six in that chapter talks about interest. So all interest derived from an investment by a political subdivision or by any local political public officer under the authority granted by section three of this chapter shall be deposited, except as otherwise provided by law in the general fund of the investment authority or any other fund its governing body designates specifically or by rule subject to the modification and limitations in this section. So let's go over some of that a little bit. Except as provided by law, means that if there is another statute that provides specific guidance on how interest from an investment should be, of a particular fund, should be treated, you would follow that guidance. It would uh, supersede this one or take precedence over this because it is specific guidance. Um, the one example um, that I'm going to use today is um, in um, the drainage funds. I made a lot of time in that fund or in that uh, statute. So in 36.927, and that's the drain, uh, statute in, in section 113 of that, it states that the county treasurer shall credit interest from the investment of a fund created under this chapter to that fund and improve, and interest earned from the investment of a maintenance fund shall be credited to the general drain improvement fund. So this is an example where the statute is specifically saying not the general fund, general drain improvement um, or, or a construction fund if that's involved. Um, we talked about the chart of accounts a little bit um, earlier this week, um, and it does have the statutes for funds. Um, so if you have a question, if, you're, if you are investing a specific fund, MBH, or, or um, another fund that you may, might have some significant money in, if you look up that statute, um, hopefully it will tell you. If, there, if it doesn't address interest, then you're back to 513.96. If it does, you need to follow that statute. So unless there is, uh, again, something specifically um, in the statute regarding it, it will be, your interest goes to your general fund. Unless your governing board, which in this case would be your commissioners, direct the interest be treated differently. This could be part of your investment policy, could be a fund ordinance that directs the treasurer to post the interest of a specific fund to that fund, but the, the governing board can say, not the general fund, put it here. Also in this subsection in 513.9 and 6, there are exceptions to the deposit in the general fund. So interest from the following investment shall be receipted as follows. If the interest is from investments of federal funds that can be traced to, so you're talking your federal grants here, those need to stay with that fund. So if you are investing money in a grant fund, you post the interest back to the grant fund. Um, interest from investments of funds controlled by court orders should be receded to that fund unless otherwise designated by the court order. You probably won't have a lot of these. This is something the clerk, if they're investing their uh, trust funds, needs to deal with. It also specific, specifically addresses property tax collections. Um, each county treasurer, if authorized of, uh, by the Board of County Commissioners, may invest tax collections under this chapter pending distribution 
of the collections to political subdivisions. These investments may not exceed the amount available after giving consideration to what may be needed for advance of public tax or property tax, and it must be made a deposit accounts or repurchase agreement, the maturity dates of which are, are um, not, I think I missed the nut there, later than the time when the tax collections are required by law to be distributed. So you, you can invest them, but they have to be available, and you know that you've got to be able to do settlement. So you can't have the, your property tax tied up when it's time to do settlement, but make sure you allow enough um, for uh, property tax advances, um, hopefully based on your history of how much you have to do property tax advances. Interest received for property tax collection investments shall be receded into the general fund or the MVH local road, other road funds. The fiscal body, so now we're talking to council, determines the allocation of this interest between the general fund and the highway funds. If your county issues bonds and your proceeds from those bonds are not needed immediately, those bonds may be invested um, until that project is ready to start. Um, this is another reminder that liquidity must be considered when investing because when you're ready to start that capital project, you've got to have that money available to pay the, the um, construction contracts. The interest is posted to the debt service funds that establish to pay this debt. So when you issue bonds, your auditor is going to establish a capital project fund for the project. They're also going to have a debt service fund to repay that. Uh, the debt service is another tax levy, but if there's interest off of the proceeds, they go into that debt service that goes back towards paying those bonds off. So after considering your liquidity needs, you have determined there is an identified amount of county funds that, you, that may be invested in compliance with any investment policies that your county has, you make your investment. The amount that you invest is the principal. You are taking the identified portion or a portion of that and putting it into a financial arrangement, which is an investment, that you expect to result in a return of additional money, which is your interest, at some point in the future. Again, you do not want to lose any portion of your principal, which is why you are a conservative investor and the statute prescribes the type of investments that you can make with county funds. You always want to get your principal back and hopefully as much interest as possible. Interest is the money that you receive in return for the use of your principal amount. So as the county uses a cash basis form of accounting that we talked about on Tuesday, you will post interest when it is received by the county. When you get the interest, you need to post it. Even when that payment is made to the investment account and not directly to the county, that's very important. Okay. An example, think about your deposit accounts, like you have an interest um, or savings that, that pay, or checking or savings that pays interest. So each month the bank will deposit or credit um, the interest to your account and this will show up on your bank statement. So they didn't write you a check, they just put that money in your savings or checking account. You're going to post that to your cash book as soon as you know what that interest amount is because you've received it. They put it in your bank account. Okay. Um, oops, I just clicked off the side. And what is the IC code um, that Lori referred to regarding interest on the drainage fund? 36-927-113. I spend a lot of time in the drainage fund. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, so when you get the up-bank statement, you're going to quiet us in the interest to the general fund. Uh, if that's where it's going, and we've, we've talked about different ways it can go other places. Um, again, you're not getting a, a check directly from the bank, you're just doing it based on the money you actually deposited in the bank. That um, quietness then is going to increase the general fund so that your left side and your right side of your bank statement will match. <clears throat> and you're going to credit it on the right side, you're going to credit it to the bank where it was posted. It's the same logic for investment. If interest is credited to your account, added, added to that principal amount, you need to quietus that interest amount in as revenue because it has been received by the county, even though that receipt was made to the county's investment account. 
okay? If it's paid to you, you need to post it when it's paid, even if that investment has not matured yet. But if it's been added to that principal amount, you need to post it. The interest is in this, that particular situation is increasing the amount of your principal, and the increased amount needs to be reflected in the county records as interest income and additional amount of money invested. Okay, this is kind of goes back to what uh, Cindy was talking today uh, with Trust Indiana, although that you're going to see that on your statement. If they're compounding daily, that means they're adding interest to your principal, to the amount you have in that account every day. Okay, and you have to recognize that. You don't have to do it daily, but you at least have to do it monthly. So we're going to go through some examples that I hope clarifies this, but if you have any questions, Ricky and I love to take these phone calls, so let us know. Um, hey, you are speaking for or speaking to CDs, for instance, correct? Yes. And here we come into our next example. This is a very simple example. This is a very old-fashioned one. It used to be all you did with CDs, but I know it's a lot more complicated now. So let's take that as an example. You have 10,000. I made all this money. This, all of these numbers I made up because they're easy to manipulate. They have absolutely nothing to do with reality, like the interest rate. But let's say you have $10,000 and you are going to invest it in the CD and the bank's going to pay you, uh, or the financial institution is going to pay you 1% interest for that $10,000. Okay? It's very basic. And again, I know you're not even earning 1% right now, but it's just a lot easier for the math. So you purchase the CD by writing a check or doing an ACH. Um, to the financial institution that you're buying the CD from for the $10,000, okay? You receive your, your paperwork in return that you've got this money invested in a, in a $10,000 CD. The county still owns the $10,000. It's not a disbursement of funds. It's an investment, okay? So on your cash book, you're going to show the $10,000 coming out of your checking account, and then you're going to show it being posted as an investment on that second section on the right side for investments. Okay? This has no effect, net effect on the right side of your cash book because really you're just moving it from the checking account to the investment. You haven't dispersed money. You haven't receded money. You've just changed the location of it. Okay? At the end of 12 months, the CD matures. The bank is going to issue a check for $10,100. Okay? And that's your original $10,000 plus that 1% interest they said they would give you at the end of it. So they're giving you back $10,100. Okay. So the $10,000, you're going to show that as the investment maturing. So you're going to reduce the investment amount by $10,000 and put that back up on the upper portion into your checking account. But you also need to quiet us in the $100 that you earned because that has is, is not been reflected in your records up to this point. So they're paying it out to you at the end of the year, at the end of your 12 months. You put the hundred dollars, you're going to quiet it. That is interest. Post it to the general fund unless otherwise directed. And that's going to also increase um, on the top. Your your check your because you deposited 11 the the 10,100. So you've got 100 coming in by quiet it and 10,000 coming in um, on the cash flow from investment back to a demand account. That's a simple one. Here's the not so simple one. We're going to take the same facts, okay, except this time you're investing the money for two years, let's say, and the bank is paying the interest quarterly over the two years instead of all of the interest being paid at the maturity date. Again, making all this up. This is not a real world example, but it illustrates it uh, for our purposes. So your original entry on the cash book remains the same. You're taking $10,000 from your checking account. You're showing it as an investment on the second section on the, on the right-hand side as an investment. You've invested $10,000. However, after three months, the bank lets you know that your investment has earned $25 in interest, which has added to your principal. Okay? Now, instead of $10,000, as far as the bank is concerned, you have $10,000, $10,025 invested but you've only got the $10,000 on your cash book. So even though the money was put in with the rest of your investment, you need to quiet it in the $25. They paid it to you by adding it to your principal amount. Okay? 
You never received it. You didn't get a check. But they've given it to you by adding it to your principal. And you can tell that because the second quarter, the second three months, your interest is going to be $25.06 because it's the 1% on $10,025, not just $10,000. You know, it's not a big deal in interest, but it does make a big deal on what you're, you know, when you magnify this, obviously you're investing more than 10000 I mean, it can make a difference, okay? So the second, okay, so the bank now shows that you have $10,025 invested. Your cash book only shows $10,000, so you need to quiet it in the $25 as interest income, and also at the same time increase your investment to $10,025. So you have $25 more dollars invested, so you need to up your, uh, the same time you're quieting in, you're going to show it on that second section, um, or the investment section on your cash book, that that $25 has been added. Okay. So three more months pass, and the bank informs you that your investment has now earned $25.06 because it's being calculated on the uh, additional $25 it's showing invested. Okay. Now your new principal amount, because they've added it to your account, is $10,050.06. Okay. The next quarter, the interest is calculated on the $10,050.06. So you actually earn $25.12. That's added to your principal. So now your principal has increased to $10,000, $10,075.37. Okay? And so on until you get through 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 the entire the two years or however long you've got it invested. The important point in here is that your principal has increased each quarter. When we come into audit, and we contact your investment and get a confirmation, a third-party confirmation, and they say, oh, yeah, they have $10,075.37 invested with us. Your cash book only shows $10,000. And, again, this is not material, but it can be if it were a million or $5 million. We're going to say you are not keeping your cash book up to date because you don't have that interest in there. You, and hopefully I'm making it clear why you're posting it, because even though you haven't received it, and it's still tied up for another year in this investment, it's been added to your interest, added to your principal, and interest is being paid on it. When it compounds quarterly or something that compounds daily, which is really good, then each day that, that investment is growing, and the principal is based on that new investment amount. So when do you record interest? The basic answer is still, when you receive the interest, you need to record it. The problem is it's not always easy to tell that you have received the interest, and so you have to really pay attention to what you're investing in and how it pays out. And make sure that your cash book matches how much money you have invested. Okay. So you know, if, if you get a check, that was the easiest back in the day where they would just, you know, or my first example, they cut you a check for $10,100, but obviously $100 was interest because you could just look at your cash book and tell the $10,000 was your investment that's been returned. It doesn't always happen that way now, okay? If it's added to the principal amount, you still need to quiet, quiet it in, the, the interest amount, and show it as an addition to the investment. If you are one of the 17 counties that are producing GAAP financial statements, they're going to take it a step further because they're going to look at accrued interest. Accrued interest is interest that is earned but not yet paid. That is not going to ever show up on your cash book. It's an adjustment that's going to be made to produce the financial statements, but you're not going to record it. It, it. you know. So in our same example, the first month, you would have earned part of that $25. But they didn't pay it to you. So it's accrued because they've held it for 25 for 30 days, but it isn't actually paid to you until the end of that quarter. So you've got to pay attention to your documents. When do they pay the interest? How do they pay it? What are they, you know, looking at your investment statements? Have they increased the amount of interest or amount of principal that they're paying interest on? That those are clues <laughs> that it that that interest needs to be quieted in when it's paid out. 
If you have questions about any of it, you'll have to send us your documents because we don't always know by what you know what you understand. But if you send us what you know a copy of, of what your interest or your investment statement or something, we can help you work through this. If there's some questions on that, we just want to make sure again when we're coming into audit, we're going to confirm the amount of investment with that invest with whatever financial institution it's invested, and your cash book should match that for the end of the year. So if, if, if your interest invest or your principal investment has grown, you need to make sure that you've adjusted your cash book and brought in that interest amount as income. Am I doing good? I'm, I'm to you now. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> All right, unless questions, I'm done. Let me unshare. I tried to get my computer a break because it was getting hot. I got some. Mine's going to go a little faster, so it might be your computer. Yeah. I think it's my computer. I think uh, I think that's where, hopefully, we got one more to do. Um, I'll try not to run you over too much. Oh, I didn't take the nearest back.